So uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. And uh, this is Tuba Mirza. I am representing my company, On Time Training and Consultancy Services over here. And uh, we are here to uh, discuss the, and uh, of course, celebrate the success journey of our PMP mentee, Hasib Aslam. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, for joining me in this uh, webinar. Uh, before we move to the agenda of the webinar, let me quickly give you a brief introduction about my company as well as about myself. So on-time training and consultancy services is a professional training and consultancy setup. We are basically the uh, like uh, uh, advisors of uh, portfolio program and project management domains. Uh, we are professional trainers of uh, PMI certification track, including PFMP, PGMP, PMP, RMP, PPA, ACP, like all the PMI certifications, especially PMP, PFMP, and PGMP, the triple P uh, stack of uh, PMI. We are also in the consultancy business and we do help organizations and uh, individuals uh, regarding their project program management practices. So uh, this includes a PMO consultancy and BPO uh, and uh, project program uh, related optimizations and uh, standardization in the organization, as well as uh, we do offer uh, career counseling and uh, mentoring to the individuals as well. So if you are looking for any such services, uh, feel free to contact us and I'm going to uh, share the uh, communication channels in the chat area uh, while we are doing the conversation with Hasib. Uh, okay, about myself, uh, I am based in Pakistan. Uh, my company is also registered in Pakistan. However, our services are uh, worldwide. So uh, I I have around 16 to 17 years of a professional career in the software industry of Pakistan, where I've uh, served in many organizations um, in the vendor as well as in the customer uh, capacity. And I started off my, my career as software engineer, and then I gradually uh, moved forward uh, in the technical leadership and then the project management and program management. And the last job that I, uh, that I did was in the departmental lead load. So now I am uh, doing full time, uh, uh, like I'm running this uh, consultancy setup full time. And uh, uh, of course, I am uh, the founder and owner and CEO of my business on time training and consultancy services. On the certification ground, I am PMI triple P certified, which means I am PFMP, PGMP, and PMP certified, uh, as well as I have uh, some other credentials like RMP and uh, PSM and PMI 84 PMP certification. I did my PMP in 2017. And uh, since uh, last year, uh, in 2022, I formally uh, started giving uh, the training and uh, uh, proper mentoring to PMP aspirants. So this is a brief about myself. Let's move to the uh, session agenda and let's uh, begin our conversation with Hasib. So Assalamu alaikum Hasib and uh, welcome to the webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you doing? Assalamu and thank you so much for inviting me. It's uh, It's been an honor to be here. Uh, so would you like to introduce yourself? Because I did not do your introduction. So I wanted you to uh, give uh, an introduction uh, by yourself. For sure, for sure. Well, guys, <clears throat> um, thank you for joining everyone. Uh, my name is Sivastam. I started, I'll start off with my educational career first. So um, I did my MS in project management back in 2014. Uh, which was a very first batch at Berry University, Islamabad. And then prior to that, I did my master's in business administration, uh, specialized in marketing. Uh, my professional career started off back in 2010 with a uh, US-based value-added reseller as a marketing and partner specialist, which is more of a communications specialist, I would say. Um, as soon as I started off my professional career, I, I got to know that every anything and everything is kind of like a project these days. Uh, specifically in my field. Um, so um, I got into a lot of different projects where I did not have the, uh, to be honest with you guys, I did not have the required skills and knowledge at that time because I was a very fresh um, graduate, but I had the chance to work with so many different project managers um, that were like uh, experienced project managers. So I got the opportunity to work with them and understand the importance of uh, having uh, required knowledge and skill. So that's why I moved. Um, after a couple of years, I, I um, wanted to do project management, uh, uh, MS in project management rather than doing something else. 
Um, then I moved into a cloud services company. Uh, there, I, it was a startup, so each and everything was started from scratch, and I, I worked on each and everything from the word go. Uh, there, I got to understand that uh, it's very important that you have to have the project management skills and knowledge uh, in not only for 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 the projects only, but uh, in the day-to-day -day operations as well, where you have to do. You have to run different type of teams. You have to have different type of communication channels between um, geographically dispersed teams. And then also in regards to all the technical skills that you're required. Um, my professional career has been in uh, like um, a roller coaster for me, ups and downs in regards to uh, working in multiple organization at the same time as well. So there was a first FedRAM certified unified communication and service company in the US that I was part of. Um, uh, from the very beginning where I had the uh, opportunity to work with uh, uh, higher ups in the federal agencies there, uh, which also made me understand that it's important to have a PMP certification um, because most of the organizations require uh, you to have the relevant knowledge and then they also require to have a relevant certification as well. So now I am currently working at uh, ATSC Cloud, which is which was formerly Thin Cloud, as a director of marketing and communications, I have uh, multiple teams working under my uh, umbrella in in uh, digital marketing, SEO, creative um, development, as well as content writing teams. So I have to have the relevant knowledge and skill, which is why I opted for um, PMP certification. I know that I speak a lot too, but you have to stop me uh, when you feel like I'm going like way beyond. <laughs> no, no, I, we actually are here to uh, listen to you because people listen to me a lot, uh, like in one-on-one -on -one conversations and my sessions. So this is a session uh, like dedicatedly, dedicatedly for you. So you are supposed to be speaking and I'm just supposed to be moderating it. So we would like to hear from you. And it it, it actually like, it feels good to hear you. So uh, Haseeb, you are done with PMP. So you, do you tell us that how does it feel like after uh, doing your PMP not just like uh, like like how does it feel to have that credential but how does it feel to uh, properly utilize it in your uh, job as well as in your uh, professional career and how you are getting the advantage out of that in your uh, professional career uh so as I mentioned, I have um, like multiple teams working under me and I have to work with like a lot of uh, geographically dispersed teams. Um, that, that's just one aspect of it. Then um, mm -hmm. there are so many different things. After uh, my PMP certification, I can actually apply the knowledge and skills. I had, ex I had the relevant experience previously in regards to what I was doing from a marketing perspective, but not all the uh, industry uh, set standards or benchmarks in regards to what a project manager should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so at times, and, and I'd be very honest with all of you guys, at times we would look for shortcuts where we can just get something done right off the bat and then we would be happy about it. But then you have to understand the root causes in regards to what was done previously, why a specific solution came uh, and how, how this actually helped the organization as a whole. Uh, which was never done in the past. We just we would just go with the flow and then make things happen. Uh, PMP certification helps you in like a lot of different ways, uh, not from a knowledge perspective, but from skill perspective as well, uh, as well as for your teams. It helps you in career advancement. So it increases the credibility and visibility within your organization that you're working as well as outside the organization in the job market as well, which is what I am already getting. It's been just like 10, 15 days that I have been a PFP certified, but there are so many different organizations that have like approached me already through my LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. because it's a uh, it's a globally recognized certification and it's respected within the project management community and organization when they have some kind of a project management or a project manager role they would always prefer someone that has a relevant certification so pmp being the most appreciated in uh, one of those uh, uh, then once you have the knowledge and skills that you have uh, uh, adapted while working through your journey for a PMP certification, you actually have much more, much better project outcomes. So you already have some projects that are, that are running. You have so many operations that are running at the same time, but you just cannot identify the project outcomes in regards to what it, the outcome should be and what it shouldn't be without the certification or the skills that you have. With um, 
the certification, you can identify and make sure that you're applying the knowledge and skills, the right type of tools and techniques, which actually accelerates and gives you the much better project outcomes, which is what I'm actually currently applying nowadays in my organization. And I hope to see much better project outcomes in the coming days. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, one one more thing, uh, uh, I see that you are working already in the director uh, position, right? Which is like, uh, I, I believe it's a level up uh, than the project management application. So you probably would be in a better position to work with your team, like who are actually in the implementation part, as well as like connecting it to the broader organizational objectives, like and understanding that how the value delivery out of those projects are connecting to the overall outcomes and uh, the uh, achievement of the goals, the corporate goals uh, at the organizational levels. So that is one uh, other aspect as well that your project management connects you with because uh, doing part is one thing uh, which we in detail uh, study in project management and uh, like getting the gist out of that and uh, like uh, utilizing that at the organizational value delivery perspective is a other thing so i believe you are you are uh, going to get benefited from that aspect as well uh, from the broader organization exactly. perspective as well so that's exactly where i was moving next so uh, it it uh, as i'm already in a leadership role i have to not just look into the teams that i have down below but i also have to look into the strategic um like i have to be part of the strategy teams and make sure that the organization grows uh, given the current economic conditions, and then it has much, it provides much broader value to the clients mm -hmm. uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. From a leadership skills perspective, PMP helps you a lot because uh, when I did my MS back in 2014, it was all like waterfall. There was no agile um, mm -hmm. concept at that time. Well, there were there were people doing agile, but uh, in, uh, in in the theoretical study, we never uh, worked on that. Now that I have the agile and self-organizing teams perspective, and then making sure that each and everyone is accountable and they kind of like help each other, I have a much higher authority, much uh, higher responsibility in the organization where I can come up with ideas and enhance the value uh, provisioning to the clients, as well as to the inter internal uh, employees within the organization as well. Mm -hmm. Then there was one major aspect, which is helping out currently, uh, which I was always looking into in regards to compliance and standards. Mm -hmm. So while well, now that I am uh, like in an in IT industry and if uh, things change overnight and there are so many different things that you have to cope with. There are so many certification and compliance standards that you have to have. Uh, previously, well, we were trying to come up with roadmaps all the time. We were trying to do so many different type of meetings, but at the end of the day, uh, applying the knowledge and skills that came that come from uh, the PMP certification um, is like instrumental because uh, we can apply all of that knowledge in planning making sure that we have daily standups with making sure that we have the compliance standards so that we can reach out to specific customers. So but let's just say an example, healthcare organization have HIPAA certifications. We have to have that certification and then we have to keep on renewing it on a regular basis. That actually helps. Uh, PMP helps me identify the loopholes, the gap analysis, and make sure that we actually have proper resources allocated to that and then make sure that we have it uh, like on an, on an ongoing basis renewed so that the organization can provide much better value. That's you are exactly actually utilizing you it like in a very, very good manner. Uh, I mean, like, like the, the, you are taking the essence out of that. It's not only a credential for you. You are actually using it like, uh, like holistically and uh, full pledgedly in your work, which is like a very, very uh, good thing. And which is the expected um, uh, thing as well from these credentials because these credentials are not just for the theoretical uh, understanding or the conceptual understanding like the real deal um, um, uh, you know starts when you actually move uh, into the uh, log your, your professional perspective and your organizational perspective and you start benefiting yourself as well as your organization with that so Hasi, uh, moving forward I would like to ask you that uh, when did you get that idea that you should be going with that? And uh, uh, how long did you take uh, to prepare for that? Of course, I was your mentor. I have been with you like uh, in this journey since the start, but people would like to hear that from you. Oh, you can see the smile on my face. So um, <laughs> it's a uh, long, long yeah. story short. 
it's been a long time that I have been looking into doing it, but it's just that I have not been consistent. There have been so much going on. Um, I have been jumping within the organization from various roles, uh, and then so many personal things uh, come up as well. But then um, now that I was in a, in a leadership role, I needed to make sure that I am actually well mm -hmm. equipped with each and everything from a knowledge and skills perspective, the tools and techniques that should be applied. I have to restart the journey and get a, a PMP certified. Uh, again, uh, the, the way you said it, it's not just a piece of paper for me and it shouldn't be for anyone because uh, on paper you can be strong, but if you're not applying it in your real world uh, professional organization or professional environment, it's just like, it, it's a waste of time. So I got to understand that I am doing things, but I'm not doing things exactly the way they should be. I, I feel like I was um, I was stagnant, uh, reaching to a specific level uh, in in the organization, and now I needed to do something new, which uh, where I started off this uh, at the end of last year, I would say August of last year, uh, where I reached out to you um, so that I can get some because I did my MS in 2014, and it, so many things have changed. Um, then I, I started working with you and EDU HubSpot in uh, making sure that I have the right amount of material, right type of simulator, right type of mock tests and each and everything. And then I actually get mentorship from you specifically. And the major thing, two major things that I always wanted was one was consistency and one was motivation. Consistency is something that I was always lacking in because as I mentioned previously, things change overnight. I was just jumping here and there between so many different things. I would start something uh, two days in a row, I would do something. And then uh, for a week, I would be gone. That is where uh, my mentor, uh, uh, Ms. Tuba, came into play. And then she was always on top of me, asking me about status updates. We set up specific milestones. Um, we had a specific date in mind where we are going to be going for the certification. Um, again, I would say the consistency and the motivation that came in from my mentor is what actually helped me get into uh, being certified for the project management professional. But again, to your question, last year, August was where I actually started it off. And then within like three to four months, I was ready to go and get it, um, get it done with. Yeah, and I also would like to add over here uh, for the, the people who are uh, actively preparing for their PMP as well as who are aspiring for that, that uh, if you want to do it like uh, uh, in the right manner. By right manner, I mean like you, you want to like uh, just uh, get uh, everything out of that and you want to connect the dots and you want to connect like the concepts like together, which is a concept of integration in project management. And of course, um, uh, prepare, preparing for the exam, which is a big deal. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it's not an easy exam, I would say. Uh, it takes around this much time with your job and your family and other commitments that you are usually into. Uh, so two to three months, is, is a very usual period that in my opinion everyone should be taking to get ready for your any any pmi certifications i would say but at times people are fully dedicated they are like like only focusing on that goal in that case you can easily do that in uh, one month or 1.5 months as well so that depends like it, it depends on the case to case basis so uh, moving forward uh, uh see people also would like to know uh about your exam experience like the overall exam experience when you actually sit in the exam and when you uh, did that uh, what was your experience how did you manage your time how did you manage that pressure because you know uh, usually when people do pmp like it's the usual thing not necessary that it, this is a case with everyone but usually pmp is the first thing that people usually attempt with pmi so uh, they are usually nervous, they are anxious, and they actually like have a lot of questions that what would happen if we do this, what would happen if we miss this, things like that. So uh, would you like to ex uh, share some uh, uh, like uh, some of your experiences while you were in the exam room? And uh, maybe you can share some uh, important topics that you came across in your exam as well. Of course, we are not going to share any specific questions or anything that you uh, got in the exam, just anything that can help the, the aspirants who are actively preparing for their PMP? Yeah, sure. So um, I would say um, starting off from the exam experience, uh, I would just go back a little bit uh, from where I started off, uh, not going directly to the exam, because uh, if you go to the exam unprepared uh, and you feel like you you know everything, um, you're planning to fail because time pressure is exactly what 
kind of like takes away everything from you. You may know it, each and everything, but then if you're not done with like your first 60 questions within the first 70, 75 minutes, the pressure kind of like mounts up and then you kind of lose patience. So uh, why I said I would just go back a bit is that EDU HubSpot gave me the opportunity to have uh, all the different types of materials, different type of uh, mock questions that would that may come up uh, with an exam. There are so many different types of scenario based questions. So each question, uh, there, there are so many questions that would have that would be like more than like four, three to four sentences at times. And even if you just read it, uh, a minute goes past. Then uh, the simulators have to, like you have to do uh, the mock test and the uh, clone test as well that uh, ADU HubSpot provides you. And you have to do it in, a, in an exam kind of environment so that you can have, uh, you, you know how much time is it gonna take for you to do like 60 questions or 120 questions or 180 questions. Because until unless you have that specific pace in reading a question and identifying and wearing that PMI hat and making mm -hmm. sure that you mm -hmm. actually have that specific answer uh, because at times, all of the answers would be correct, but then in that specific scenario, you have to make a decision which specific answer to go with, and then you just move forward. And then once you're done with like those, when you go to the exam, uh, I, I personally chose uh, a, a test center based exam because I was not comfortable with uh, proctor based, which is home based. Um, it, it's, it doesn't feel like an exam, to be honest with you. So I, I went to the test center, uh, each and everything was very well um, communicated to me by PMI, um, the address, the phone numbers, each and everything, the check-in um, the check -in process, the checkout process, what I need to bring in, the type of uh, identification that I should have, the cleanliness of the environment, each and everything was, uh, I, I would say, up to par. And then within exam, once you go, well prepared. It's just like a uh, walk in the park, I would say, if you're uh, very well prepared. Um, in regards to different type of topics or questions, I would not. I would say that it's not just like exams change. I, I did. I took like three to four different type of mock tests. Every exam was different from other. Some would have a lot of questions uh, about waterfall or hybrid. Some would have a lot of questions about resources and risk management. Some would have a lot many questions about um, scheduling. So you have to read through each and everything, all the process groups. You gotta make sure that you know each and everything. The major thing that Ms. Tuba always told me and that actually helped me out was wearing that PMI hat because in day to day, I would answer something very differently. And then when you wear the PMI hat where you have to go by the ethics, code of ethics of PMI, and then you make sure that each and everything is in proper way, the answer would be totally different at times. So that's the major thing. So you have to wear a PMI hat, that's one. You have to make sure that you are very well prepared. You go through the mock tests, through the simulators that EDU HubSpot. Well, there are so many different pr pr uh, providers out there, but then I actually went with EDU HubSpot, so it was very easy for me. Um, so um, that's pretty much it. And the checkout process was very easy. Like it's just uh, the same process that was communicated to me. Um, no specific advice because uh, I'm still learning. I'm still in the learning process. So I'll just let it be as is. I hope I answered the question too well. Yeah, you did. And uh, to, uh, to those who are wondering, uh, basically, uh, of course, uh, I do have my own company on time training and consultancy services. However, for PMP, I have affiliated with EDU HubSpot and uh, I do uh, like provide uh, the PMP training and uh, mentoring uh, with affiliation of EDU HubSpot. So EDU HubSpot offers a very, very, very good uh, similar for PMP and of course they have their mentors and uh, services as well. I am one of uh, those mentors uh, in the company. So uh, basically uh, uh, the model that we follow is like services are provided by me, the training, mentoring, guidance, uh, step-by-step -step plan and uh, of course uh, they do take check with you, follow-ups with you, all of that is provided by me but we do use the simulator by EDU HubSpot. They offer a very organized and structured way of explaining the ECO which is a curriculum by a PMI and uh, they they have a very, very well uh, articulated and well organized uh, learning videos and, uh, um, you know, the practice tests, the mock exams, like the full uh, full and mock exams, as well as 
the uh, clone test, which is like the real PMP exams that only ATP providers, like the authorized trainer partner uh, providers with PMI can get. So these are all the materials that we offer in this program, along with our 35 hours of uh, training uh, uh, live sessions, which is uh, a requirement by PMI for PMP certification and the complete mentoring guidance and step-by-step -step help uh, um, um, like in a personalized way. So these are all the offerings that we offer. Uh, it's an end-to-end -end program. Um, you do not need to like uh, go for anything other than like just showing your commitment and dedication towards uh, this journey and the rest of every uh, service and every artifact and material that you need to uh, have uh, with you for your PMP preparation is going to be provided by us. Uh, and uh, uh, one more thing that I would like to add over here for those probably who are just new to all this and they are just here to listen out to what PMP can add in their professional uh, career or in their jobs. Uh, PMP is uh, the world recognized, I would say, number one world recognized project management uh, certification by PMI. And um, uh, in this certification, they cover every aspect of project management. So those who think that project management is only about the technical aspect of that, this is wrong. Project management uh, by PMI is broadly divided into three domains or three areas, which is like one is the technical aspect, which they term as ways of working. The second is the people domain, which they term as the leadership skills. And the third is the business environment which connects the project management to the broader corporate uh, objectives and the goals. So these are the three areas in which the complete exam content outline or curriculum of uh, PMP is divided by PMI. I mean, cover everything while we uh, deliver our live training sessions to our students as well as while we help them uh, getting ready for the exam. So uh, please keep this in mind that project management is no more only doing the schedule management or coming up with the artifacts or doing coming up with the plans and just uh, uh, maybe uh, dealing the client or customer uh, uh, you know uh, sessions or um, uh, handling the suppliers no uh, project management is way more than that right uh, okay so moving forward with our uh, agenda uh, hasip uh, you uh, you have mentioned yourself that you have uh, 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 like completely referred the ED Hub Spot uh, material. And uh, of course, I have guided you with that, that how to use that effectively to get ready for your PMP. Uh, how did you find this overall mentoring and uh, services like that, the mentoring and services and uh, training that provided uh, uh, by me, as well as uh, uh, the application process and uh, step by step study plan and you know the clone test and the mock test and uh, how well were you able to relate to that material with your real exam experience because people would like to hear uh, that uh, people are usually interested in uh, getting done with the credential and uh, just passing the credential which is not the reality but people are usually interested in that mainly so how would you like to uh, recommend our mentoring and our services uh, to the people who are in the group and um, they ju just want to know about that sure uh, <clears throat> i think i touched base a little bit on that uh, but um, i'll just go through it once again so um starting off with the application process and then the mentoring and um ed hubspot simulator and everything else the materials i would say um i would on a scale of one to 10, I would definitely rate it like 10 being the highest, I would definitely rate it nine or 9.5, somewhere along those lines, because um, it was pretty simple, pretty easy, very flexible timings for me uh, from a material perspective. Then the theory uh, is very well explained. It's not like you have to go through like 2,000 or 2,500 different pages, and then you have to read through each and everything from a com uh, in complexity. Everything is very well uh connected with the day-to-day -day activities and the professional environment that anyone would uh experience on a day-to-day -day basis uh, then there are uh, various examples uh within the training materials that correlate with different industries it's not just one industry that's been picked and all the examples are from that industry there are examples within the material from manufacturing industry there are examples from it industry there are examples from aviation industry so almost I wouldn't say almost all the industries are touched, but they have tried 
to come up with a uh, correlation between all the industries. So if anyone is willing or if anyone is aspiring to be a PMP, they can kind of relate their experience with the real life examples as well. So the material is pretty much up to par. You, you get to understand each and everything you have. They keep you engaged in a way that there are so many after every 30, 45 minutes, I, I'm not remembering it correctly, but uh, in order to keep you engaged, there's kind of like a pop quiz uh, where you have to answer specific questions, scenario based questions based upon what you have uh, learned so far. That is where uh, they open the breadth of your mind and then make you understand that you have to wear the PMI hat all the time. Um, so. EDU HubSpot has been very, very helpful from a materials perspective. And then again, Ms. Tuba, I, I do not want to like say a lot, but then it's it's very obvious from, um, you know, from what I said previously. <clears throat> Consistency and persistence was what I was lacking previously. And then Ms. Tuba has been from a mentoring perspective. It's not just the examples, the mentoring and the study time. Uh, she helped me in uh, making a plan. She helped me in making milestones, making sure that I actually do what I'm supposed to be uh, doing in a week, get everything done in a timely manner, understand each and everything, reach out to me on a regular basis, come up with different type of questions, make sure that I am actually engaged, making sure that everything is in place for me from application perspective till the very end when I did my PMP certification. So uh, <clears throat> because um, it was the end of the year. Um, there, was so, there was so much going on within your professional um, uh, life as well as a personal life that you just forget things. But then uh, I would say if I have to rate my mentor from uh, on a scale of one to 10, it would all, also be like nine, 9.5. I don't want to give 10 because uh, that, that, that seems insane. <clears throat> so uh, from an application perspective, I would go back to application submission perspective because at times people, I've heard people saying that it's very tough and you just like the application does not get approved at times, it get, goes into audit. The application process was pretty easy and simplified for me as well because uh, Ms. Tuba helped me understand what would be required, uh, what type of information would be required so that I can, I have everything on the back of my mind. And when I went into the portal, uh, it was pretty straightforward for me because I have to put in all my information, uh, make sure that everything is correct, add in my PDUs, which is what my educational PDUs were more than enough to kind of like cover that experience. And then my work experience, making sure that I have the relevant experience and then I can actually explain it. And then uh, boom, within like four to five days, my application got approved. Yes, uh, uh, Haseeb, and this is true. Actually, I would like to add over here that those who think that uh, application is a tough process, not at all. Application in case of PMP is the easiest thing. And I have um, uh, my examples uh, of uh, like ma many students who got their application approved in two to three days uh, as well. So, uh, and I'm not exaggerating if that happens, but at the very max um, uh, that PMI takes uh, on an application is five days. At times, your application goes into audit as well and uh, people think that audit is a very uh, like it it sounds like audit is a scary process but it is not not at all uh, it, they just ask for like one to two referrals uh, in case of audit for each of the program that you mentioned uh, in your uh, pro uh, project uh, experience and uh, they ask for your degree proof that you mentioned in your academic uh, um, like uh, history and they ask for your 35 hours of PDUs. that's it uh, in the usual process they do not ask for any document proof but if your application gets selected in the audit in that case you need to provide the document proof and that's it so usually the audit along with the approval happens like uh, uh, together uh, in case the application selected for audit and uh, that like usually does not take maybe it can prolong your process for two to three more days but not more than that so application is an easy thing uh, at least in case of uh, uh, pmi and uh, as far as uh, the uh, you know the content and everything uh, else is concerned uh, PMI usually uh, talks about knowing and application of the global best practices. So like as Haseeb men mentioned, uh, I, I usually get those queries and uh, when prospective students come to me asking for queries and, um, you know, like they, they want to know more about PMP, they have that perspective in their mind. I don't know why that perspective is there, but I just want to share that over here because there are many people uh, in the uh, participant area. Probably they, they can get benefited from that. They think that PMP is, a, is an IT 
a certification or a software certification or something related to the field of IT. This is wrong. None of the uh, PMI certification belongs to any specific industry or domain. PMI is uh, worldwide renowned for the very same reason because they offer credentials and certification which is applicable for every industry. So this PMP certification is also applicable for every industry. No matter which industry you belong to, as long as you are doing projects, you are in the project management area, you do something uh, that, that that relates you to belong to the issue of a PMI, you can go for that. And uh, why we do credentials? We do not do credentials just to add that PMP or like uh, ACP or those keywords in front of our name. We do credentials so that we get to know the best global practices that these bodies where a lot of uh, high class and elite class professionals are present who spend day and night to come up with these best practices which who help you in getting to know what should be doing what should not be doing when you are in such environment and these certifications actually is a self-assessment for you to know that uh, if you are already in something like this are you doing it in the right manner or not and if not you can get to know the gaps you will get to know that what you are doing ground and where are the gaps to bridge and uh, what you should be knowing, not only you, but your team should be knowing as well who are working with you. So until and unless you do not know yourself that what should be doing and what should not be doing or what is the right way of uh, applying project management, how can you be able to lead a team? As a project manager, you, you usually are supposed to be leading a team. You are supposed to be helping your organizations in achieving uh, the targets and business value delivery and objectives uh, of the organization. So this is why we do such standardization so that we learn ourselves, we improve ourselves, as well as we improve our team, as well as we improve our organizations as well. So moving forward with the agenda, I see very, very usual question. A very usual question is people come to us uh, and ask us that why we should be investing this much amount. So uh, like if, if you talk about the Pakistani or Indian audience, uh, an overall investment on this PMP credential, including the exam cost is around 700, uh, 650 to 700 US dollar. In case of other regions, it's going to be around thousand dollars right so uh like on the monetary ground uh, this is like uh, this much investment and on the time and commitment ground it's going to be around two to three months uh, at times four to five months as well so people come to us asking this why we should be investing in this uh, like our time our money our commitment why we should be prioritizing it and why how we are going to get a return on this investment right uh um or um, like in short why we should be doing this um, how this certification is going to make a difference than what we are doing right now in our uh, organization in our career so uh, would you like to add something because uh, i of course have a lot to say on this but when i say this people at times consider that a biased opinion as well because of course i'm in this business and uh, they think that i'm selling this out uh so uh when they hear uh that coming from the, the people who are already done with this who are already getting benefited with this they get more convinced so what would you want to say over here about the roi on this investment pmp investment uh understood and it's it's going to vary from person to person um i also used to have the same type of uh, question at the back of my mind like i have industry experience professional experiences all that's going to matter why do i need to have a pmp certification mm -hmm. i don't have to invest that much time or money and then i already know what pmp is going to give me but then um at times you may be right but then most of the times uh, there are so many different things going on. And as I mentioned previously, things change overnight these days. I would go from, I would not start off from the monetary value. I'll just go from a professional career perspective and uh, set personal satisfaction perspective like down so that the last thing is what entices everyone else. So I have a personal satisfaction when I am in a specific role for like a year or two. Uh, I'm just assuming I'm not giving like specific time frame, and I'm doing the same thing over and over again with the same type of uh, things although there are lessons learned that you are, are going to do but then if something new comes up I, I tend to learn I want to know what's happening I want to be part of it and then PMP 
education, I would not say PMP certification, PMP education is going to open your mind to so many different horizons. There is always multiple, like there are always two sides of a picture. So I, I may be looking at it from the front, but then there is a back of it as well. So PMP certification is going to give you the tools and techniques, the skills, uh, uh, the set standards and practices that you should be applying in the uh, professional environment, uh, not just in a professional way, also in your personal life as well, because there's so much going on. Um, again, I mentioned something previously was improved project outcomes. Uh, we may be doing things outstandingly well in our day-to-day -day activities or in our projects, but then if you have a PMP certification, you wear that PMI hat, you have the knowledge and skills and the tools and techniques that should be applied to a specific project, you may be um, surprised to know that the outcomes that you were getting previously that you felt like were the best outcomes may be average outcomes. And then you are definitely gonna have much better outcomes in the future when you apply the code of ethics, the tools, techniques and everything else. So that's why you have to have that PMP certification and the knowledge and skills. Um, third part I would say is professional development. You always have, you, you gotta keep learning on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, if you are stagnant at a specific space, someone else is gonna just like overtake you, uh, uh, you never know. So you're gonna keep on learning and it's not technical education as Ms. Tuba mentioned, it's education about your day-to-day -day life, your personal life as well as your professional life. Um, there are so many things going on um, that we are doing in a specific way that can be done in a different way with the education and skills that we are gonna get from PMP certification. We may get much higher value out of what we are doing as of now as compared to when we are not PMP certified. Now, the two major things that everyone, specifically in Pakistan and probably in India, people would be looking into like, uh, I'm investing money, so why, sh what am I gonna get in return? So there is a survey, uh, I think it's called uh, uh, PMI's earning power salary so survey, something like that. Uh, uh, which, which says a median salary for a PMP certified project manager and a non-PMP certified project manager is a 20% uh, uh, raise for a PMP certified. So um, just as an example, if you're getting like $1,000, you probably are gonna get 20% more if you are a PMP certified, just as an example. And then there are more increased job opportunities. So organizations, enterprise organizations that are looking to have like project managers in their organization. They, were all, they will always be looking for in the requirement section, you'll always see relevant project management certification preferred. That preferred part is where your C, uh, resume or CV actually gets shortlisted. If you don't have that, you're among like millions and trillions of people out there that are looking for that specific thing. But if you have that certification, you, you stand out. So you have higher earning potential, you have much better chances of landing a much uh, better job or uh, your dream job, your professional development, your skills and uh, improved outcomes, project outcomes. There's so many different things and it's gonna vary person to person as I mentioned previously. This was a very, very good answer, Haseeb, and uh, that is a fantastic uh, explanation of this uh, answer, uh, this question. I would also would like to add that uh, when whenever someone comes to me and asks that, uh, why have I done so many certifications and why I'm uh, into this? And for your information, I started this uh, training and um, like uh, this consultancy setup like in 2022, but I have been in the certification setup for, uh, for the past five to six years. And when I started this, I never ever thought about uh, getting a monetary uh, like uh, benefit out of these certifications. Whenever I did a certification, there's only one motive to improve myself as a professional, as a person, to be a good time manager, to be uh, to be a good uh, you know professional. Um, and for your information, project management is not in only in the professional career or any jobs. Pro uh, project management is everywhere. It starts with you as a person. You start getting better in your organization, in your, uh, like, uh, in your own, uh, in instructing your own things and in aligning your things with other and in your day-to-day -day dealings with the other, you start getting, like, better and better with these uh, certifications and with, with this uh, knowledge and I'm sure Hathib is going to uh, agree with me on this. And as far as uh, the application of the, uh, like, whatever we are going to study in the PMP curriculum, uh, there is a disclaimer that PMI has given by themselves in the uh, pro project management body of knowledge, which is a reference uh, book by PMI, that 
they have given you the global best practices for project management. It does not mean that everything and uh, anything which is stated in this curriculum uh, in ECO as well as in the book, reference books, or in any reference book for PMP is going to be as it is applied uh, or everything is going to apply in your respective industry or in your respective job. They say that whatever is applicable to you, you should be in a position to understand and analyze that what is going to be useful and helpful for you you take that and whatever is not working for you you leave that but until and unless you do not know everything uh, from the standardization perspective how you, will you be in a position to apply that or you, you get to know that okay this is not working for me this is not going to work for my project or for my team and probably uh, this is uh, something that needs to be a little customized so standardization helps you in opening up your mind that what you should be doing and what you should not be doing and what's the best practices and if you are not doing best practices what is a uh, reason for that and uh, uh, like and there's like a lot that belongs to that um so uh, thank you very much hasi for joining us this is our last thing uh, that i would like to ask because we have few questions as well uh, from participants and we would like uh, to dedicate um, the last 10 minutes for that uh final word of advice what would you like like to tell the project management aspirants and PMP aspirants that uh, what, what they should be doing and what they should not be doing. What is the word of advice uh, from you for them? Probably th there are many people who are going to be like very much confused. So what would you like to tell them? Well, I, <clears throat> uh, an advice from someone that's still in the learning phase, um, I would say uh, I may not be the very best person to give advice, but then uh, just what I have understood and what I have experienced is uh, one consistency if you are uh, consistent in what you want to do and if you have a specific goal in front of you you have set it up you are uh, you're trying to get it done you got to be consistent uh, on a regular basis um, secondly whatever goals you have set you have to get prepared for it and by preparation i don't mean like just uh, uh, prepared from a theoretical perspective you got to have some kind of um practical experience you, you need to understand you need to make sure that anything and everything that you learn from theory you actually apply it and you actually uh, open the horizons and make sure that whatever is theoretically there you you actually apply it in your day-to-day -day life as well um last thing um planning preparing is very important for the exam as i mentioned previously you just do not read anything or just theoretically be prepared and go to the exam, you have to have, uh, wherever you want to get it from, you have to have the real exam life experience. You have to have mock tests or the clones, clone test in a simulator in a specific exam environment, uh, making sure that you actually are able to get all of those 180 questions within the 230 minutes that you have. Uh, I, I hope I explained it in a way. If there was a different perspective to the question, uh, I can I can explain that too. No, no, uh, that, that was like anything that you'd like to advise. And uh, thank you very much uh, for for that advice and suggestion. Hope uh, the participants are going to get benefited from that. Okay, so coming to the participant uh, questions, I have uh, like one uh, uh, like a comment from uh, Jia Khan. They are congratulating you and myself for this wonderful achievement. And uh, like, and by the way, uh, for the audience, uh, I see did that with above target, uh, which is like a big deal in case of uh, PMP, because uh, in case of PMI certifications, we have just a scale, there's no percentage achievement. So it's above target, target, below target and needs improvement. These are the four skills and above target is something outstanding. Nobody knows that what above target percentage behind the picture is only PMI knows that, but we uh, know that above target is something which is outstanding achievement and target is something which is okay to good below target is something like which is beyond uh, like below expectation by pmi and needs improvement is something which is going to most likely fail your exam and you probably need to like reattempt that uh, pmi says that you are not ready for uh, pmp certification so hasib did his uh, certification in all the three domains uh, he got above target and he did it like uh, with flying colors so uh, on that as well hasib you deserve uh, a huge congratulation um 
Okay, so we have a couple of questions from Bakas. I think he has left the session, but still we would like to answer that because these are good questions. Um, how is the online exam different from the center based exam? Uh, okay, let me answer this because uh, probably Haseem is uh, not in a position to answer that. He has already explained that why center based was uh, more um, convenient for him. And uh, usually to my students, I recommend and suggest them to go for center based and not to the online. There are a couple of uh, reasons for that. Uh, one reason is that uh, uh, the distraction, uh, probably when you are at home, and like uh, Haseeb said, uh, it doesn't really feel like uh, 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 an exam, and you probably are not going to be 100% focused, and you're not going to be in that exam mode that you definitely need to be when you are in the PMI certification. Um, that noise or distraction, which can be one of the things. Of course, uh, there's a possibility of uh, internet or electricity or uh, like the usual uh, facilities that need to be there. They are acting up at home, which is, uh, of course, a possibility. And uh, the third very important thing is uh, uh, that uh, in case of some some calculation or some some mathematical related questions of you usually do not get uh, a lot of mathematical questions in exam. But in case you get uh, two to three, uh, in uh, center based, you get a sheet, removable sheet, along with a duster and a marker that you, you can do any working on that and you can remove that and reuse that. In case of home based experience, you need to have uh, all that done on your computer system. Uh, a simulator has everything uh, in place, the calculator, the whiteboard, and uh, of course, you need to be writing that with your pointer with your touchpad and pointer and not everyone is acquainted and comfortable doing that. For instance, I am a trainer. I use a lot of my pointers and trainers uh, like uh, this touchpad uh, for trainings and uh, sessions, but not everyone is uh, so much comfortable with that. So the question which is supposed to be answered in just few seconds or in one minute probably can take uh, four to five minutes just because of the reason reason that you are struggling writing those numbers and those uh, doing those calculations um, and that can be uh, like uh, a little trouble for those who are not uh, very much comfortable with that so this is one reason one other reason why we do not uh, prefer the center based uh, the online uh, uh, exam and yes i have a few bad experiences as well with my students where they had their exam scheduled uh, using this proctor based setup and there is a 15 to 20 minutes check in process that in case of proctor based exam you yourself have to be done with the pmi uh, representative who is a proctor for you for that exam and uh, due to xyz reason that check in process does not go through and uh, the, it, the person could not uh, take that exam. Uh, and that has happened more than once in my uh, case, like when I started my uh, training uh, profession, uh, that happened to me. And then I learned, got that lesson learned that uh, probably center-based is something which is, which is like uh, most safe um, because in case of center, every, uh, like each of their things, which I have um, explained in which in case of proctor, you are supposed to be uh, taking care of is uh, taken care of by the center representatives and they they take the responsibility of everything that's why people uh, prefer uh, the center base and if your exam is scheduled at the center no matter what happens uh, be it rain be it a snowfall be it wind storm anything and everything like can happen but your exam is going to be on time at the center and they are going to make sure that your exam happens successfully so this is like a huge relief, uh, which uh, uh, in case of uh, home-based experience uh, can be a trouble. So that's why we recommend to go with uh, center-based. And of course, if you are not getting slots or if you're not getting a center availability and you are, uh, you are in urgency, in that case, you can go with a proctor exam. I'm not saying that everyone uh, like uh, comes upon, uh, across these difficulties, but this can be a risk uh, which uh, you can easily avoid in case of uh, center-based experience. Moving forward, uh, there is uh, one more question by Vakas. Even though you have explained it, just wanted to understand further given that if someone has been working in the PM field for five plus years, how does PMP 
uh, value practically, specifically uh, its technical vocabulary and the jargons and the processes and uh, its different perspectives uh, would be great if you can shed light on that. So, so Hasib, I would like to answer you because Vakas also is coming from the technical and IT background and you also belong to that uh, same field. So uh, just uh, for his clarity, if you want to answer this question. Sure, I'll just read it once again. Oh, someone's been working in that. Okay, so again, as um, I, I think we discussed it already, and you have explained it as well, in uh, because <clears throat> in in regards to the PMP certificate, it's not something like uh, it doesn't have. It's not a technical certification. Again, like it, it is not going to add any technical vocabulary or technical jargon within your uh, organization or wherever you um, someone's working in any industry or field. Um, just like what like anything and everything is a project these days. Uh, that has a start and an end date. It, it can be any industry, whether it's manufacturing, IT, or any other industry. It's going to help us um, in three, four different ways uh, from a professional way, not from a monetary way. Uh, one is where we are going to have the knowledge and skills and the tools and techniques. That's where it all comes into play. And wearing that BMI hat, making sure that we actually apply the knowledge and skill that we have uh, acquired, um, wearing that BMI hat, uh, having the code of ethics, it's always going to help because these are uh, benchmarked best practices identified by so many different uh, project managers across the globe combined together in PMBOK. And then they have given us this curriculum so that we can um, apply the same benchmarks in our field. So it's going to help us in making project outcomes be much better. It's going to help us in making sure that we have the right tools and techniques, the right skill set, and the knowledge that we can apply in our day-to-day -day activities. For some, it's going to give massive um, results. For some, it's going to take time. But then again, it's not anything technical or something else, but it's going to help you in day-to-day I would say not only just for, uh, projects, but also in day-to-day -day operations as well. I hope yeah, that answers uh, it. Yeah, yeah, that, that really answers. And uh, um, yeah, one more thing uh, which we are getting from uh, the Adnan, uh, he is asking uh, that, uh, and I think we have already talked about that, but let's uh, uh, talk about that again, probably he has joined late. What is the minimum preparation time frame required to guarantee a pass on the PMP exam? Um, okay, that uh, okay. Let me take this question. So, uh, Adnan, first of all, uh, PMP preparation varies from person to person. There are people who wants to get done with that, like in just to, uh, like like very early, probably in a month or so, or maybe less than that. There are people who just want to take their time to get ready for that. But on average, I recommend I as a mentor recommend at least two to three months with your job and with your other uh, 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 personal uh, commitments and your family commitments and everything that is going on in your in your life with that around two, two to three months so uh, i have got uh, one comment on my whatsapp not over uh, the, uh, this uh, chat uh, while we were having this session that uh, isn't uh, two to three months a lot no two to three months is not a lot uh, probably uh, it may sound to you because there are other providers in the market who offer the pmp exam preparation with guarantee in three days or seven days or something like that but i personally and we at the et hub spot as well we offer quality we do not only offer the credential. Credential, you are definitely going to earn. If you are going to spend seven days ded dedicatedly, you you probably can earn that. I, I am I am I myself am saying this, uh, but probably that's not going to give you that right perspective, those right uh, uh, connectivity of the things, and uh, that uh, that mindset which will help you apply those knowledge uh, and uh, uh, learnings in your professional career for that you need to absorb that you just need to like keep on eating that and like just uh, uh, make sure that it is there in your head no that's not going to help you need to be absorbing that you need to be understanding that in the right perspective and that absorption that uh, understanding that alignment and owning it i would say owning it it's going gonna take some time it's not going to happen in few days or in few weeks in my opinion because when we try to do some uh, something with quality it demands 
the right effort, the right hard work, the right dedication, the right experience, the right application and everything, which takes some time. Of course, if you're doing that dedicatedly, probably you will be in a position to do that early, probably in a month or so, or uh, in, in a few weeks as well, you can do that uh, uh, in a in few weeks as well. But usually uh, I offer uh, like uh, a program for at least two months to my student, at least two months uh, is required because the simulator that we offer, it's a lot, a lot of practice, a lot of learning, a lot of concept building and, uh, uh, you know, uh, like just uh, putting you in that, uh, uh, in that right mindset and guaranteeing a pass is not something that we can offer you. Guaranteeing a pass is a mutual thing the effort from our side as well as the right commitment and effort from your side as well with that we can make it work right and hasib is going to agree with me on this because if i keep on doing uh, everything on my part and you are not showing the right commitment uh, on your part probably we cannot guarantee the past to you right so it's a mutual uh, like thing that we uh, like we we together uh, try to make it work and if, uh, but yeah, one thing we can guarantee that if you are going to follow uh, our step-by-step -step study plan, if you are going to follow the live trainings and the concepts that we deliver over there, and if you are uh, going to practice all of uh, the questions, the highly situational questions that we offer on our simulator, that then we can guarantee that you will uh, crack it easily. But if you are not doing your part, if you are not preparing, if you say that, no, I have other priorities, I'm not able to do that and I'm not able to take out time for practice, then we cannot guarantee a pass, no matter how early or how late you want to do that. So Hatsi, uh, I think this is the last thing that we are going to talk and uh, we have we don't have any other questions from the participants. So would you like to comment on this question by Adnan, um, like uh, guaranteeing a pass as well as the minimum time required to uh, pass the PMP? Oh, <clears throat> I would not say anything here <laughs> because uh, I, I would agree with you in regards to what you have mentioned. And I think I have mentioned it previously as well. I was not very consistent and, and I needed motivation on a regular basis. So it's a commitment from both ends. It's a two-way process. It, it, it's not one way um, that if you have the right simulator, if you have the right mentor, if you have right type of tools and everything readily available, you're going to pass. No, there is no guarantee about that. Uh, you have to show commitment. You have to be uh, dedicatedly uh, reading through the course materials. You have to do the uh, mock tests and the clone tests as well. And then you got to make sure if you don't understand something, you discuss it with your mentor so that you both have the same, you both are on the same page. And once you go into the exam, you actually pass it. And then a minimum time frame. people can do it in like one month. Uh, of course, I have seen people that, that that have not done like that they started off and then they have not done in like six months as well. It depends upon your consistency and dedication. That's all. Um, so I would agree with Ms. Tuba. Uh, there is no guarantee, but then again, it isn't that tough. You just got to show consistency, dedication, and then have the right mentor and the right type of uh, course materials. And then of course, you're definitely going to pass. Yeah, I hope uh, Anand this answered your question. And uh, if there uh, is anyone who would like to ask anything, they can just unmute and ask uh, your question. And if no, then we are done with our session. Uh, it was a very, very nice session. Thank you, Hasee, for joining us. And uh, thank you for, uh, for sharing such useful insights with uh, the participants. Hope everyone enjoyed that. I enjoyed uh, uh, this a lot. And if you guys are interested in exploring RPMP program, we are going to start our next uh, bootcamp. Uh, we offer uh, the group mentoring program for PMP every two months. So the next program is going to be started on 4th of uh, February. And uh, if you're interested, you can connect with me. I have shared the channels over the chat. Uh, if there is anything that you guys would like to add or you would like to ask from Hasib or myself, you can uh, ask us and otherwise we are good to wrap up. Good evening, Ms. Tuba and Mr. Hasib. Congratulations from Gulzar. I want to know that how much time Mr. Hasib has spent uh, while doing this PMP and uh, also how many questions, how many mocks he has performed. Thank you for uh, anticipated reply. Yeah, Hasib. Uh, so yeah. 
uh, I think Hasib has mentioned uh, this uh, multiple times that he has spent three to four months with me, probably not ded dedicatedly. Dedicatedly, he was with me for the past two months. So he did his certification on 29th of December and uh, he actively got into this in November, I would say, because he joined me in somewhere in August. But the initial few months, he was just demotivated for the XYZ reasons. And then uh, like uh, I had to like uh, just uh, keep um, like uh, engaging him and uh, like uh, keep on going with him um, on and this track that no he wants to he he's ready to do that he will he can do that and then uh, eventually he uh, got into this um, uh, he started owning it in November so probably he actively took two months uh, November or uh, December where he was uh, like doing it uh, with the full pace um and uh, uh, the other thing is uh, uh, i'm sorry i actually missed that part what was the uh, the other part of your how question? many questions um how, asked, how many questions yeah, and how many mocks yeah uh, hasib would you like to tell that uh, how many mocks were there in the simulator and how many questions were there yeah so i uh, every so the course materials have some questions as well. Um, so every course material has like a couple questions after every like an hour or so that you can get, get into the pace with it. And then uh, every course has a test at the very end. So there are multiple uh, eight, nine uh, different courses based upon the uh, process groups. And then each one has a separate test at the very end that you, you can just go through it. And um, I don't have an exact number on all of the questions, but then every course had probably would have, some would have 50 questions, some would have 30 questions based upon um, the course uh, length. And then <clears throat> mock tests, they are uh, more in alignment with the exact exam. So there are four mock, mock tests and then there are like two clone tests uh, exactly the way you're gonna experience something in, within the live exam. So six full-fledged exams and then like seven to eight um, short exams uh, that, uh, that I went through uh, from each uh, topic that I, I went through from a course material. Yeah, let me let me uh, uh, summarize that as well. So, uh, Guzar, I'm sure because you are very much into the PMI track, so you are aware that PMI offers ECO, the exam content outline for every uh, PMI certification and our simulator uh, by EDO Bizbot is organized in that manner. So there are 35 EDO uh, like ECO tasks. And for each task, we have video learning videos as well as um, the practice test as well as the slide decks that we offer and by the end of uh, those uh, uh, ECO by uh, ECO task by task lessons we have full length by full length we mean uh, we put our students in the simulated environment so that they get ready for the uh, exam related time management and pressure handling and um, and those full length four, uh, four mock, uh, mocks actually give them a real understanding of where they are standing uh, uh, on the uh, real exam part and then there's a concept of clone exam which is the exam that uh, PMI provides to the ATP providers like I said I'm an ATP trainer authorized trainer partner tra uh, uh, by PMI for PMP certification and EDU Hub Spot is an ATP uh, training provider under that uh, organization I have earned my badge so uh, the only ATP providers get clone questions from PMI clone questions are real PMP exam questions that they have uh, uh, like given in some previously uh, occurred uh, PMP exam but now they are not appearing in the real exam but they can be like very helpful for your uh, real exam uh, preparation and those are pretty hard as uh, highly situational questions so in total we offer 1500 questions 1400 to 1500 questions uh, around 450 in the usual ECO task based practice test um, 720 in the in those um, four mock tests and uh, around uh, 250 to 300 in the clone test. And once our student uh, gets done with all of uh, those questions, they are ready for the exam. At times, they have to like just do multiple iterations as well. Yeah, 1400 to 1500 is a very good number. At times, my student do not do all of the mock exams. In fact. Uh, Hasib uh, missed uh, one or two mock exams as well. He did not prepare all those mock exams due to the lack of time. But as long as you are doing mock exams, clone tests, practice tests, learning videos, simulator-based uh, slides, you are 
done with that. But you need to do, uh, you need to be doing that in the right context and as per the study plan provided by your mentor. And uh, it's it's like um, very overwhelming for our students. Uh, there are a few members uh, in the participant uh, uh, section who is already my PMP student and they would watch me, uh, me on this that uh, th this is like a lot of content. So you need to be doing that step by step and uh, otherwise it's going to be like very overwhelming and the student already get confused and demotivated that I'm not going to be able to do all of this like uh, for my preparation. So we need to be like with them. We need to be telling them that no, first you do this, then you do this, then you do this. If you are getting this code, only then move forward. Otherwise keep on repeating that. So uh, all of that helps. This is where the mentor comes in and they need to be like helping them with that. So it's not that we just like uh, 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 just uh, bulk those 1400 questions on them that okay this is the question just do that and get ready for that and once you are done with that oh, the mentor is going to be taking the credit that he he or she was the mentor uh, from ED of sport for that student and he or she made it work for them no we, we do not uh, offer this we are with our students uh, on a daily basis so that uh, wherever they need our help we help them wherever they need support, motivation, follow-ups, uh, and uh, the right guidance, we provide them, right? So uh, I hope this answered uh, your question. And uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, we are already uh, 10 minutes up. And if there is any other question, uh, we are happy to answer. Otherwise, we are good to wrap up. Anything that anyone would like to add or would like to ask? If no, then uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And uh, like I said, my next PMP program is going to be starting from 4th of Feb. So if you guys are interested in exploring it, just feel free to con connect with me, either with my LinkedIn or with my uh, business number. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hasib, once again for joining. This was a fantastic session. I really enjoyed it. I hope everyone else in the uh, participant section also enjoyed it. So I will be coming back, uh, inshallah, very soon uh, with another PMP student and with an, another success story webinar. Uh, stay tuned uh, with me on my LinkedIn uh, page and uh, stay blessed. Thank you very much. Love this. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.